Reviewing functions relations. So some of the properties of functions. So we want to be able to differentiate when we have a relationship, whether the relationship is a function or not a function. And there's a few tests that we can do for this. So what makes a function? So basically our definition is one input is has having two outputs is not a function. So we one input has to have one output. Okay, so what makes a function? One input maps onto one output. Okay, one element in the domain maps onto one element on on the range. Okay, so what does not make a function is when we have one input going to two outputs. And to see this visually, it's a vertical line test. So if I have a graph that looks like this, okay, a vertical line does not pass through twice. If I have a vertical, if I have a function like this, one input here, one x, has one, two outputs, so it does not pass the vertical line test. So that's our main test then. Okay, if we have a, if we have a, a an arrow diagram, we're looking for one to two. Two to one's okay. Okay, so here this is a function. For a, it is a function. Okay, so this two mapping onto one is okay. This is a situation where we have two different x's mapping onto the same y. Okay, so a parabola is a function because it's two different x's mapping onto the same y. That's okay. Okay, that's that's okay. It looks like that. But if I have this situation here where I draw my vertical line, it does not pass my vertical line test. Okay, so drawing my vertical line, I have one, two, three outputs. So my one input x has three outputs y. I have three y outputs. That's not allowed in a function. So this is not a function. So it does not pass our vertical line test. Okay, two to one. This is what we're looking for. Two, one x, sorry, one to one to two. So one x maps onto two y's. So what ends up happening then is if I were to graph this, my domain is three, I have a range at five and seven, meaning there it is, doesn't pass the vertical line test. So this is not a function. Okay, so this is not a function. There's no such thing as a horizontal line test, so this is okay. We can have two mapping onto one y. Okay, so this is then becomes a function. This passes our vertical line test. Okay, so that's okay, that's okay. So function notation, the simplest way we can look at function notation is it's another way to write y. Okay, and it allows us to differentiate between two y values. There's a one y here calculation and not a different y calculation over here. So that's kind of the basic way. We also want to use understand function notation as our input and output. So there is our input. Okay, we need to put it through that function to get an output. Okay, so my input is negative 2. I put it through the function x squared plus 3. My output works out to be, remember to square the negative, so again, it's positive 4 plus 3 is 7. So my output is 7, or my y value is 7. Okay, so this is my x, my input. There's my f of x, my function. And this is my y, my output. Okay, my domain, my range. When I talk about g, I'm now going to flip, switch to the g function because I want to differentiate between these two different calculations. When I have x plus 3x plus 1, now once I start dealing with expressions, I just got to keep track of my inside expression, the inside substitute into the, the, the x in the expression 
the equation. So I'm going to write it like this. So my g of x is equal to 2 times x minus 1. Where there's an x, I'm going to input my inside expression. So that's the same as what happened here. I put the negative 2 into there, but I ended up with a calculation. Here, I'm just ending up with another expression. So I have to keep track of this. I have to just simplify this now. This is the correct expression. What's implied is I should really make sure that I combine like terms. So it's equal to 6x plus 1. When I have these two different f of x and g of x's, I can replace this f of x with an x expression. And I can replace this g with a g expression. Just be careful, though, that whenever we do substitutions, especially with minus, make sure you use brackets because it's easy to, to lose track of the pluses and minuses when you have a minus outside like this. So combining like terms, I get x squared plus 3 minus 2x plus 1. Okay, this is where most people make their mistake, is it's double negative here. So once I've done the substitution, I have the right expression. I want to, what's implied is I always combine like terms. So there's my new expression. f of x minus g of x is equal to this expression here. Here I have to be really careful because now I have an embedded function. I have an outside and inside. Okay, so I'm going to do my outside. Uh, maybe I'll color code that blue. So there's my f expression. Okay. In fact, maybe I'll just keep this consistent. I'll use green for g. And I have my inside g of x like this. Okay, so my x, f of x expression is going to be the outside, my g is the inside. So I have my outside expression is going to be x squared plus 3. Again, this does not mean times, it's embedding. It's replacing the x in the original function with the g expression. So the g expression is 2x minus 1. So where there's an x, I'm going to replace it with a g expression. And so there's my substitution. I've done the inside substitution into the outside. So there's an inside function, an outside function. The outside refers to this expression. There's no time. We're not combining with times in here. It's really important to understand that we are embedding a function inside another function. So once I've done that, I can then, I've done the substitution part. What's implied is I need to simplify and combine like terms. So I have to FOIL that out. Remember the squares and minuses don't go together so I have to multiply here to get this expanded out and I end up with 4x squared minus 4x plus 4. So there's my final expression for g embedded inside f or in other words we say f of g of x.